Hey, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today, we're going to continue talking about looking and analyzing the data. As we do that, we're going to talk about line plots today. So our learning goal for today says, I can interpret measurement data from various line plots. So let's talk about what line plots are. So here's an example of a line plot. A line plot actually looks a lot like a number line. However, right now, I have just like the start of a line plot. This is kind of like a scale for a line plot. I don't have the data included in here yet. So once we see that, you're going to see how the picture here is um, like kind of like a start for a number line, and then we'll transform into a line plot with data on it. So let's label the parts of the line that are not labeled. So here we have one, two, three, and four, but I don't have this point labeled. What do you think, friends, this would be in between one and two? What do you think I could label this? Yeah, probably one and a half, right? Because it's about halfway in between one and two. What do you think I could label this point? Yeah, it looks again like it's halfway between two and three, so I would say two and a half. How about this point? Yeah, I would say three and a half because it's in between the three and the four. So how is the number line similar to the ruler we made in the previous lesson and how is it different? So I want you to be thinking about the ruler that you guys made in the last lesson and this um, part of our number line. How is it similar and how is it different from each other? So they both show numbers one to four, right? But the ruler went to six inches, but they both show at least one to four. They're marked with whole and fractional units. So they're marked with half, okay? One half, that's a fractional unit. And the number line shows the halves between the number, but remember that the ruler showed quarter inches too. Okay, so that's just some of the ways that they're similar and different from each other. So here's a full-on line plot. When we have line plots, you're going to have your number line or scale across the bottom, and then you're going to have some sort of markings across the top. Typically, they're in X's, and if we look at this, we have all the numbers across the bottom represent hours, and the X equals one person. So you have to have a key or a legend to be able to describe what each one of these X represent. So for example, in this one, it represents one person. Sometimes it could represent more than one, okay? Just like when we did picture graphs. So what does the number one on this line plot represent? So just this right here, not my X's, just the one, what does that represent? Yeah, it represents one hour, okay? This right here represents one and a half hours, this is two hours, two and a half, three, three and a half, four hours. What does the number one and a half on this line plot represent? Number one represented one hour, so what does one and a half represent? One and one half hour, one and a half hours. Awesome. If the label on our line plot was people instead of hours, could we have fractions? So instead of these being hours down here, could we have one person, one and a half people, two people, two and a half people? Could we have that as fractions? Now, that wouldn't really make sense, right? Because you can't have a fraction of a person. I can't have half of me or half of you. That just doesn't make sense. We're not going to chop us up. We have to stay whole. So when we use fractions on the line plots, we need to make sure that it makes sense for the unit to be given as fractions. Okay? So what else besides time could you show on a line plot with fractions? You could show our height. You could show the length of something, the size of our shoe. So there's lots of different things that you could measure, but make sure that it has to be able to make sense with fractions, that you can cut it in half or cut it in quarters. We can show measurements on the number plot or on a line plot with fractions. How is a line plot a lot like a bar graph or a tape diagram? Hmm. So when you look at this, how do you think it's similar 
to a bar graph or a tape diagram. Well, one way is like the X's are like the unit of one in a tape diagram. The X's, they also look like bars. That's like the first one that jumped out to me was how they kind of look, almost looks like a bar graph. It's just not solid, a solid rectangle that slides up. It's X's. And then the tallest column shows of uh, X's shows the most of something. So there's just a couple ways of how they're similar. Maybe you came up with some different ones and that's awesome. Which amount of time spent outside has the most X's? Which amount of time spent outside has the most X's? Yeah, two hours because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and everything else is below this. So two hours was when people spent the most time outside. When we made bar graphs and picture graphs, we used the word favorite to talk about the data that had the largest value. Does it make sense to say two hours is the favorite amount of time spent outside? Not too much. It makes more sense that we can say that two hours is the most frequent or more common amount of time spent outside because it has the most X's. Sometimes when we think about when we're going outside, it's more of when we have time to go outside, not necessarily our favorite time to go outside. So with line plots, it's typically things that are more frequent that happen or more common. What's the second most frequent amount of time spent outside? One and a half hours, awesome. What does each X on the line plot represent? Yeah, it represents a person. You could see that here. Now, remember I talked about earlier that line plots can have different values. So you'll always want to make sure that you're finding that key or that legend to be able to know what that uh, value on the line pr plot represents. How many people spent two and a half hours outside? Four people. Awesome. All right, high five to you guys. You guys did a great job interpreting data from line plots. So way to go. You guys did awesome. Please head back on over the, to the module to see what you need to complete next for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. <laughs>